There are many things that are going on in the world right now. There have been hurricanes in Florida and across other states, such as Georgia and North Carolina. And we need to be praying for those families, those communities, those states, and the leaders of those states and across our nation about the struggles that we're facing. And we also have disasters and other matters in this world. We know people that have passed away. We know that people may be on the verge of dying. Many are struggling with addiction, with depression, with anxiety, financial hardship, mental concerns about the things that are in this world. There are also people who are struggling emotionally and mentally and spiritually and suffering from great damage from the devil raining havoc amongst the souls in this world. So the title of this lesson is The Potent Flow of the Gospel. Now, the gospel has the power to save souls. And many people don't correlate this deep understanding that God has set forth truth, truth of his message, truth of his wisdom, truth of his understanding truth of his authority and sovereignty. In the book of Mark, in chapter 16, verse 15, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. God knew the importance of his truth. God knew the power of his word to those souls to put forth their lives on the right journey for everlasting life. So the gospel from the Bible is very potent. And the gospel that's in this world will not save souls. It will not put the souls on the right spiritual path for the kingdom of heaven. Now the question must become how bad or eager do you want to be with the Lord? There are people constantly placing themselves in heaven, always talking about their love for the Lord, their religion, and what they believe in, and what they heard from others, but not the gospel that Jesus told his disciples to share with all the world. Have you ever wondered why are there so many different branches of Christianity? Would God be someone of confusion? Or would God have one way 
to the one place where he resides, and that is his kingdom. But we need to see this through his authority. In the book of Mark, in chapter 8, verse 35, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. So you must lose through accepting God and rejecting the world. Following his perfect ways You must remember and understand that God sent his son to die upon that cross for all souls, not one soul, but every soul that has been born, that is alive, and those who have passed on. God has the plan. God is creator. His ways are perfect. But you have to be willing to turn away from this world. How many families have separated? How many relationships have departed? How many friendships have dissolved? How many people walked with the Lord and stayed with the Lord, leaving behind the things of this world? That's what you have to lose. You have to turn away from the world. And God will show you, you His way, His will, His righteousness to seek Him, to glorify Him, and to honor Him. But to understand the potent flow of the gospel, we must also recognize we cannot be ashamed of the gospel as Paul wrote in the book of Romans in chapter 1 verse 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew and then to the Gentile see when the gospel was first laid out God has had his chosen people the Israelites But God extended the gospel to all. That's the potency of the gospel that's concentrated. And you can't be ashamed of it. And it's too many Christians by name only and not through the following of God through his son Jesus Christ. They are too ashamed to confess their Lord for the Lord. But see, you need to see that the world is not ashamed of being in the world and the things that they love in this life. Not the light and the life for salvation, but the life that leads to death through sin, and that's the devil's way. You must look to live in a godly and righteous way. In the book of Mark, in chapter 1, verse 15, 
the time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. So to translate the gospel, it is the good news. That's news that we want to hear. What if we lived and didn't have the gospel? We didn't have any hope of anything other than this physical life. But God had something greater than ourselves, greater than all creation could ever imagine. He equipped us and planted within us a soul behind this flesh. We have a soul that is within us. And our souls is part of our treasure. Something greater than anything that we've ever owned or could own. More valuable than any possession in this world. You know, even if someone was a trillionaire or even any limit of monetary value in material possessions would never amount to the value of your soul. That's eternity. That is forever. The Bible talks about what if you gain the whole world yet you forfeit your soul if you gain the whole world. You don't want to forfeit your soul. You don't want to die in sin. You want to live a righteous life through the potency of God, the potent flow of the gospel. In the book of Romans, in chapter 1, verse 17, for the gospel, or for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. So if you want to be considered righteous and not be considered by what the world says is right, but the righteousness of God, then you must live by his word, the gospel, not the gospels, not what someone else has said, not what someone has put in some book or something that you read on the internet a research in various places, but the Bible that God breathed, his word, his scriptures, we must seek the fruitfulness of God. The time is right now to turn from evilness and to start to live on the right journey for your soul. This world is not the home that God has prepared. This world is temporary. It doesn't last. And this is why we experience calamity, sufferings, pains. God wants us to be in his kingdom, to live in his presence for his eternal glory, in his richness, in his love. And the time is now to live by faith and in the hope for everlasting life.